Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. I'm sitting here with the great Sean O'Hara, former New York Giant, former Cleveland Brown, won a Super Bowl with one of those teams. I'll let you guess which one. <laughs> but I know Sean. I hung out with Sean last May, almost a year ago to the day. Uh, we hung out uh, together at his, uh, his golf outing at the Trump International Golf Course in Bedminster. That was a and dangerous day. <laughs> It was, Sean O'Hara. What's you, up, buddy? You with a golf club. That, that was a little dangerous. Well, here was the foursome. It was me, Donald Trump, Eli Manning, and my cousin Jay, who happened to, he was a, was a yeah. great golfer. So that was, uh, yeah. And you guys finished 17 under. <laughs> <laughs> and my, I, I my, think Donald's quote was, we were almost completely legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> my, my cousin Jay yeah. is actually a great golfer. He's a great golfer. And, and Eli, my God, is just a natural athlete. I couldn't believe how good of a swing he had. That's the I, first time anybody's called Eli a natural athlete. <laughs> Really? I mean, I guess, I mean, listen, I'm not an athlete, so I don't know. I just know the guy's obviously a great quarterback, and he has what looked like to me to be a perfect golf swing. I don't know. I mean, and Trump, yeah. you could tell he grew up rich around The best golf. golfers are non-athletes. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> well, Mickelson, yeah. you're right. <laughs> they all got a gut. Yeah. That is true. Uh, Tiger Woods is the exception. He's like in an amazing physical condition and trains. Yeah. You, know, you don't need that in golf. No, well, Tiger Woods, man, He when he was at Stanford, he could put up some serious weight. Right. And he's just a beanpole. You know, yeah. That was when he was well, a not freshman anymore. and sophomore. Not anymore. Now he's a little bit uh, thicker looking, but just a nat natural man strength, even when he was a well, he, you know, he, college he, player. He's changed golf. He, he trains hard. I mean, he, right. he does the yeah. Navy SEAL trainings. He does all I that. I know. He's, that's he's real he, into it, yeah. Yeah, I think that's how he hurt his Achilles originally. But if you look at, at, at the way golfers were before Tiger came in, you know, they were all smoking cigarettes. They were, yeah. They didn't work out. Tiger came in. <laughs> he's blowing the ball 50 yards past him. Now they had to move the tee boxes back because right. Tiger was killing the courses. And now all the guys said, thanks a lot. Now we got to start working out. Exactly. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, that's right. they, that guy Daly doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> no, he <laughs> that guy, we got had a different had, workout. Uh, when, I, when I was on the Stern Show, we had Daly on. He was so funny. He lit up a cigarette in the studio. I was like, what do you want? You know, uh, he, <laughs> just, just a real funny guy. But, um, again, I guess not uh, – he hasn't won a lot. Of, did he win any majors daily? He's a guy you root for, but he doesn't win. <laughs> he doesn't win a lot. Yeah, uh, he could just hit the ball a country mile, yeah. but never. Uh, Fun guy to watch. Had success when it so, counted. Sean, how do you get involved with this? So you know, this is this. How many years you've been doing this golf thing for? This is our fifth year. This will be uh, our, our fifth annual event, and. It's, ba it's my foundation. It's our big fundraiser. Yeah, it's really a great Hire cause. It's, it's basically, in general, like diseases, child diseases that normally don't get a lot of funds. Like, why? Why don't the, well, we use a particular disease that can't get money or something? Yeah, well, my mission statement is to help increase knowledge and education for life-threatening diseases. The, the acronym is HIKE. So, right. you know, the, uh, the Rutgers cleverness came in handy there. <laughs> you need uh, that. But... It's basically for diseases that are considered orphan diseases, and and by that they mean they affect less than, um, you know, two hundred thousand individuals, okay. you know, whatever the number is, and so they receive z zero federal funding, and cystic fibrosis is one of those. Um, so it, it is really. I thought that was a more you know, dare I say, mainstream disease, but uh, that people knew about. But that doesn't get enough funding at all. Huh? No, I mean, it, 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 unless enough people have it, they don't they don't consider okay. it. You know, it's affecting enough people to, to warrant federal funding, which I think is BS. And, and so that's why I created this foundation, because all of the money that goes towards research for diseases like cystic fibrosis come from private donations, from from foundations that raise money and then give to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So that was really the impetus for starting the foundation. And, uh, you know, it's been amazing. I, I don't think I ever had imagined, you know, having this much success with the foundation having it last this long, you know, sometimes athletes, we start things and we think, you know, two years from now, nobody will ever show right, up, nobody will ever right. care. So I, I just feel, you know, it, it's been fantastic to see the amount of people that when you attach your name to something and you care about something, they come out to support. And, and that to me has been the biggest part. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many relationships I've created and that, that I have now in my life because of, of, of this foundation. Well, you're probably a well-liked guy because, like I said, I was there last year and I couldn't believe the turnout. Like a lot of, you know, real famous people, players, 
uh, a big turnout, and um, it's successful. Congrats! So anyway, it was impressive last year, and Trump uh, clearly Thanks. is a fan, I guess. Uh, he was yeah. there. He was there yeah, in he space. Came. He loved it. That, he was having fun. He was having a lot of fun. That was a big factor. Ha having the Donald anywhere, I think, is a big draw. Yeah, sure. And certainly, him coming in on the helicopter didn't hurt. <laughs> he, did the, oh, you know, he did the whole really? helicopter thing. Oh, yeah. and, oh, wow. and I tell you, I tell you, he knows how to do it too. This Trump International, every fifth hole, there's a smoking hot broad. Just asking, <laughs> do you need ice? <laughs> you need a hot dog? I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, how about a mulligan? Yeah, you know, right. Sure, yeah. Exactly. They're, 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 they're there to please. Yeah. Definitely. It's Sounds a great like course, fun. though. Beautiful. It's, God, it's, you can't it's believe it's in sound. New Jersey. It's the most beautiful yeah. country out there. Well, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's actually the, the course was built on the DeLorean estate. And, and, that's and right. That's what yeah. They bought it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable when you when you see the land, the acreage, and he turned DeLorean's garage into the pro shop. Right, which is, is pretty cool, you know. And the main house, I mean, he kept a lot of it, so it, it's it's a fairly new course. I mean, when you think about, you know, how old it really is as, as a golf course, but he kept everything original, which really makes it feel like it's been there for a hundred years. Do you guys know each other? You played in the league for the same time. Yeah, you know, as, a, as a fan, you assume every player well, knows no. each other. But we know. crossed over a little bit, and then uh, we, I, I think we were at, uh, we were in Hawaii together for the, the uh, NFLPA meeting. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then when Sean, when you were in uh, New York, I guess you got there, what, in 04? 04, yeah. Yeah, I was in Philadelphia. Right. But yeah. then, you know, blew my knee out. On the way out. Yeah. Yeah. The birds I, and the giants, you know. We yeah, had big uh, <laughs> rivalry. Yeah, we were, we were BFFs. I think you had uh, you had something going on that year, though, like a staff infection. I did. I, I ended up with an infection in my leg. I went to the hospital. That's how I met my wife. She was oh. she was my nurse. So, oh really? So, <laughs> hey, to anybody out there that wants to meet a woman, just get staff. That's all you gotta <laughs> yeah, it helps if you're a football player too. You know, <laughs> didn't you get a hot uh, nurse? You're like, hey, I got a hot nurse. Yeah. Didn't normally they tell you to screw <laughs> up? Didn't that raise awareness to uh, the issue with staff in the NFL? Because remember, like, 0405, I'm sure it's a big deal, right? It was huge. Oh four, oh five, like in Cleveland, Cleveland there were got a it. ton of guys who had surgeries and then staff as a result. Yeah, uh, they, there was like three kinda... guys, like Junior Seau, I think, got it down in Miami. Like right. It, it, it became almost an epidemic, and it wasn't just staff. It was MRSA. It was the methylene resistance. Right. MRSA is brutal. Yeah. yeah, once you get MRSA, I mean, it, it basically becomes resistant to the um, to, to the drug, and I had to take vancomycin, like, through an IV, just to get, I mean, it was it was a mess. You it, had it was, MRSA? No, I didn't have MRSA, oh, thank okay. goodness. When, if yeah. you have MRSA, I mean. I mean, it's amputation time. No, I know. I was in, I was in. <laughs> <laughs> My version of this. I was in a drug rehab in South Florida, and a guy had MRSA in there, and they cleaned us out. It was yeah, like they're yeah. like, you got to get the hell. I, I never saw, and I had never heard of it before. I never saw yeah, a staff go like we panic more. You yeah. know, and is yeah. it related to staph infection? Yeah, it's but like it's the resistant. next step of it, or it's like staph it's like on super steroids. Staff. Yeah. Oh my god! And right. and, and it, it's like a whole other level. But now it's, an, it, now it's an issue. I mean, it it has created this uh, mutation to be resistant to what we're trying to treat staph with. And now it's everywhere. I mean, and if you let it go, through, it's you can be, uh, it, you'll die. Yeah. I mean, they have to cut off your limbs so that you don't die. And now, you know, they're, they're coming up with these new treatments. They have to treat, you know, wrestling mats. This goes all the way back. I mean, right. every sport out there, uh, they have to come up with new methods of treating and, and cleaning. And uh, it's a big deal. What so. uh show what do you think um I try to ask you know everybody who's, who's got legitimate stuff going on in the, in the football world about how the game's changing with uh, the concussion situation the lawsuit situation well, what do you think's going to happen with the game of football in the next you know 15 20 years is it going to change a lot cuz of all this or is that just wow. a bunch of people blowing smoke it's always going to be the same um I mean it's definitely changing yeah. there, there there's no two ways about it and 15 20 years from now I I don't know I mean I hope it still looks like football right i think like, it's popular think it enough to wear it but a lot of people I mean, don't know it's still, well here's you know. the thing I, when i think of football i think of guys like this guy all right, right. with the busted open nose bleed. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's probably one of the things that that most people recognize you from yeah. is you know whenever you bust open your head right here and you'd be bleeding yeah i mean it was right. great I mean, a tough that's player people, playing a tough game yeah, yeah that's what you think of when you think of football players and i think you know i, I think two things number one i think the awareness you mentioned the concussions that to me is changing the game, but I think it's also changing the way players think and the way players deal with it. Because 
when we were younger, when we were playing, you never said, hey, coach, I got a headache. Can I sit this one out? Right, right. Guess what? He was like, yeah, sure, pal, and, and go join the band. Enough, you know? exactly. Right, right. Yeah. Sit out the whole season. So it, yeah. it was a different culture. Now uh, I think You're the culture is different. Though. Listen, if a kid says he's got a headache, all right, he's done. He's mm -hmm. out. It's almost like you, you encourage the kid to say, I got a headache. Like, right, I want to yeah. know because you don't want anything to go wrong. Well, I, I think it's it's scary for, for a number of reasons. But number one, because we just we're, – we're still at the tip of the iceberg with this brain trauma. We don't know – what it is. I mean, CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Right. We're just finding out what that is, and yeah. you can't test it on a living individual. So uh. it, you can tear a knee and be like, all right, it's just my MCL with an MRI, but you can't <laughs> test it on a living patient. So it's it's hard to diagnose, and, and as players, we have to be our own advocates, which we're not used to be, yes. being because in the NFL, you don't want to let, any, let anybody do your job because – if they Definitely. do it just as good no, as right. you and right. you're half paranoid. the price, and you're, you're paranoid, but it's justified, paranoia. justified paranoia because yeah. right, you could lose your job. Right now, do you have? Do you feel like you have uh, after effects? I mean, from your concussion issues, um, or you know, do you feel slower? Do you have depression problems? I mean, have you felt like there's anything? I don't feel like I have any post-concussion symptoms. Um, you know, my wife might disagree. <laughs> when, I, when I forget to pick stuff up, or yeah, right. you know, when I piss her off. Yeah, or, no. Or when when you get together, when you get together with other TV guys, yeah. yeah. When you get together with other guys, you make jokes about how your wife, you know, yeah. uh, calls you a goldfish because you know you, you can't remember one second to the next. What's no, that's happening. just that's just you, I think. Maybe. <laughs> no, I, well, I feel like my wife can take advantage of me and tell me, "Hey, you, I can't believe you did this, and I have no recollection, and I just have to." Take her word for it. You mean you mentally take advantage of you? Like, like get one over <laughs> sure, on you? Like, well, I, I don't like know. Like the Vulcan mind meld or something? I don't, yeah. think, I don't think you would mind if she physically took advantage of you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right, exactly. So mentally, yes. <laughs> no, yes. but I, I mean, they're, when you talk to guys, most, most of them have something there. You know, forgetfulness, short-term memory loss. Yeah. Uh, uh, emotional. It's scary. Um, so, no, it is. It's scary. You know, John, we, we were talking before about the player rep meetings, and, and we used to go down there, and every year they would bring the former players down and we would see them all. And, you know, listen, we would know they're either walking with a limp. Yeah. Ah, I got a hip replacement. I got a knee replacement. And you know what? As players, we were like, yeah, you know what? That's going to be us. But you know what? I don't care. Play 10 you years in the league. Play. For, yeah. a, for a hip replacement, young, yeah. for a knee replacement, I'll do it. But when you're talking about brain damage, that's a different set yeah. of circumstances. Right. Because we knew going into it, hey, if we're going to play football, we're going to get hurt. That's why mom didn't want us to join up for the right. team. Because we we're going to break stuff, tear stuff. But nobody ever told us, listen, John, there's a chance that, you know, by the time you're 40 years old, you may not remember your name sometimes. Yeah. That's a whole different set of circumstances. Now, here's the other. Do you think, the, you know, and, and answer as honestly as you can or as you want to. I know it's a, it's a hard question, but do you think the NFL was was liable, was, was wrong? Do you think that they withheld information over the last 20, 30 years that would have helped some people? Do I think they withheld information? Yes, I right. do. Because... They did a study, and they determined that the study was inconclusive, but they didn't share that study with the NFLPA at the time. Right. So that that's where I feel like, you know what, they they didn't they weren't forthcoming with the information that they had at the time, even, even if it was inconclusive. Mm -hmm. Had they said, listen, just so you know, we are doing this study because we want to know, it turned out to be inconclusive, but they didn't share that information. And if we're really supposed to be a partnership, uh, you know, I, I don't. I don't think that was right. But right. I don't really think they knew how bad it was, and, and you know, now they're trying to make amends for it. So, to get back to your original question, do I think football is going to change in 15 to 20 years? Absolutely. I think it'll be a different game. Mm -hmm. We've already seen. I mean, look at it now. Just in the last five years, uh, defensively, you can't make contact with a receiver after five yards, and then you cannot hit a receiver from the the neck up, yeah. going across the middle. I mean, before, if you were a tight end running a seam route and the quarterback you know, led you too far, you were done. You were out of the game because a safety was going to take you out. Right. Yeah, now, take your head off. guys are running down the seam like, hey, I know they can't hit me. Right. I know they can't take me out. So it's changing the game, absolutely. Yeah. And well, I'm jealous, me. too. I'm jealous of the training camp situation. <laughs> I'm jealous of the fact that these guys Could only have years. to hit 15 practices they have in a season. Than you, than you did. Yeah, it was hell. Right. It was a living hell, especially if you're playing linebacker. If you're playing offensive line, if you're playing defensive line, if you're playing fullback, and you have to go in there, and <laughs> even if it's thud tempo, yeah. you're going in there and, and you're trying to show the coaches that, you know, you can blast somebody 
and uh, do your job. So it was, you know, hundreds of concussive head impacts. No, I, yeah, look, I know you're mad, but I mean, think about the generations before you that were playing. I know. And, you know, leather. I mean, stuff evolves. Well, they were clotheslining. Yeah. And yeah. Head yeah. slaps. Well, here's the thing, the thing that, Sean, do you think it'll, it's, it's going to change? You said it's going to change. Will it change for the better, in your opinion? Or, or, or what do you think? Will it be a better game to watch, a better game to play? I think... To play. I think for, I think for fans, it's going to be more exciting because what do fans want to see? They want to see touchdowns. Right. You know, they don't want to see... I'd like a, a to see some big hits. Some I'd like, like the big hits, hits though. Yeah. Right, yeah. People, but the I mean, they used to have the DVDs, you, or actually the VHSs when we were right. in <laughs> NFL Rocks. That's what I, I yeah, grew yeah. up on. Exactly, yeah. that's Guys right. getting jacked up, and, and I love that. I love seeing that. I think you're always going to have those big hits, those physical plays, but they're just trying to limit a lot of the helmet to helmet stuff. So uh, I think football, it, it's still going to be exciting. It's still going to be fun. Now, the problem is we're trying to make the game safe. Mm. And, and that's like saying, well, we want the Daytona 500 to be absolutely safe. You're driving a car 200 miles an hour. Wrecks are going to happen. People yeah. are going to get hurt. That's the way football is. Now, mm. I, I understand you, we want to make it as safe as possible. And especially to, for me, the biggest part is just the, our youth. For these kids that are playing in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, it's yeah. got to be safe for them, and, and it's a trickle down effect. So, whatever, if we want those kids to change, we have to change with the NFL first because sure. everybody yeah. emulates the NFL players. They want to be like them. They want to do what they do. Everything is getting softer in a way. Even my, yeah. my business, comedy, you know, it's it's a it's a political it's a more politically correct world. You can't get away with you know our version of a harsh hit is maybe a more offensive joke that you can't get away with anymore. It's not allowed. You, yeah. you know, you, there's language you can't use. You can, but you won't be on network television or in the mainstream making that kind of money. You might get banned from a club. It seems society as a whole is getting more laid back, softer in a way. Yeah. And in some areas, I think that's a good thing. But I think there's something to the argument in the one area where it shouldn't be is football. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I agree with you. And But I think we're in a transitional phase right now where we're kind of in between where we will get and have it be a safer game. And for my, for my input, I, I don't even know how I would teach a kid to play football safely. You know, right. I, I don't know how I would teach a kid to do an isolation block, you know, because I was taught to just stick my head under the guy's chin yeah. and drive your legs. I, how do you do that now? I mean, I can teach a <laughs> kick out block with your shoulder and, you know, and, and, you know, use your shoulder and then gain hand control and, and drive your legs up. But there's a lot of stuff that I think coaches, the old school guys, they don't necessarily have a clear image in their head of exactly what Roger Goodell expects. Well, that's what I mean. The biggest problem is going to be the gray area, like who knows what exactly you want. Like, right. So that's where we're transitioning. The rule, yeah, and the refs, then refs have to learn how to interpret the rule. They're going to yeah. have a different opinion. Well, yeah. US, USA football is doing this heads-up tackling uh, thing now where they're going around teaching all these coaches. They have, These coaches have to be certified now in order to be a Pop Warner because right. the yeah. Pop Warner coaches used to be, hey, who will do it? You want to do it? I can't do it. I'll, all right, fine, I'll do it. They didn't know anything about football. Yeah. So but I think for the kids, I think what we're going to end up seeing in, in in probably five years, kids won't be wearing helmets. It'll basically be and, and, seven on seven. And and so no one's going to uh, dare yeah. violently because hit anybody because no one's going to They're going to say right. nobody wants to damage their 13-year-old's brain because yeah. at that point in time, there's so much growth going on for them. And again, about, at that, then you talk about difference. It's just not, that's not football anymore. That's not a, the football we all learned about. No. I mean, it's going back to the original yeah. days, but, but it's not football. But like it would make me. Learn to love. It would make me a lot happier having my son play that, that style of football. Yeah, than, well, than it's, either style, that or, yeah. it's either that, that or soccer played. or not playing. Well, the thing that worries me about it is it, it kind of parallels boxing because now if all the people all the best athletes start doing other sports yeah then yeah then generationally right. football yeah. gets worse you're right and that's, that's a good point yeah absolutely. boxing there's nobody wants to box anymore it's yeah. like a musician no kid wants to play tuba anymore <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna play guitar yeah. so uh so we only got a, another minute left uh, real quick but you played you played center and guard what was a more fun position for you to play and what's what's like the Center. Center. Absolutely like, yeah. center. And not because you got a quarterback. Right. Just right. Between your legs. Um, You're more in control. Center, I, I just felt like it, it became more cerebral for me. At, at the line of scrimmage, there was so much more you had to you had to identify with. You, I had to be in constant communication with Eli and make sure that he and I were on the same page. We were seeing the same things. I had, right. you know, when I first got in the league, it was like, all right, man, I got, you're just looking at what's in front of you. And it wasn't until like my fourth and fifth year that I started realizing, wow, there's a secondary and yeah. right. there's, a, there's a linebacker level. And, and I can figure out what the D line is doing 
based on what the coverage is, what the seconder is doing. So if I see too high, I know, all right, here's what's going on. If I see the safety coming down, I know I got a blitz coming over here because he's backed up. The will linebacker's backed up by the free safety. There's a so more intellectual approach to the game. There's which, a lot which more makes going it, on. Yeah, it yeah, makes it more exciting. to me, was, was a lot of fun. And then, you know, plus you get to touch the football. Well, listen, yeah. Sean, I, I'm a Giant fan. Uh, I, I love you, man. You you gave great years to the Giants. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. And uh, great to have you here. And uh, the outing, the golf outing we spoke of, is uh, May 22nd this year. Next Wednesday. Uh, Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster, New Jersey. And uh, I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna try to come out again, man. And try to. Uh, All right, love to I have you out. My swing. You were a big hit. Everybody, <laughs> everybody enjoyed seeing you. Yeah, no, it was fun, man. It's a great cause.